Trojan Sports Now. Hello and welcome back to Trojan Sports Now. For this week's Trojan Profile, I am joined by Mark Davis, head of the track and field team. So, Coach, thank you for joining me. No problem. So, first off, just, you know, how has it been coming to Troy? You, you know, new coach, just talk about your experience first off here in Troy. It's been great so far. I mean, everybody that I've met, they've been very personable. They've accepted me and the whole staff with open arms. And, you know, they've, they've been very, very supportive. So, it's been, it's been a great experience so far. So, to kind of get a little to know you a little better. Mm -hmm. What made you want to be a track and field coach? <laughs> it's a very good question. Um, when I first got out of, out of college, you know, I wanted no parts of track and field. I kind of wanted to just kind of step away because I was just so burnt out from competing for four years in college, four years of high school, and even before that. And then I got home for like a month and I was just like, I, I miss it. I wanted to go back to it. So I knew at that point that I was going to be a coach. I called my, uh, my college coach, asked him if I could come back to volunteer. And, the rest was history. I've been coaching for, this is my 20th season now as a coach, so it's been great. It's been great. Wow, lots, lots of years there. Yeah. I know you came to us from Yale, mm -hmm. um, so how has been the change from, you know, up north and at Yale to here at Troy? Weather. The weather for sure. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, they're two completely different places, so it's, it's really hard. They're both great places. You know, I spent 14 years at Yale, so every, you know, every experience that I got at Yale has prepared me for, for this, and um, there are a lot of things that are different in terms of, you know, things that you see, people you meet, uh, but I think each place is unique and, you know, you learn something from every place. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's been great here though. I mean, I've, I've enjoyed my time thoroughly since I've been here. Good. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it's interesting, you know, for the players and it, down here, you know, the cold's not, probably not cold to you, you know, right. how is that, you know, trying to get the players to understand, you know, the weather that, you know, that you're used to? I think they think we're nuts because the whole staff is pretty much from the north. So it, when we go outside and it's 45 degrees out there and we might not be bundled up the same way they are, they're looking at us like we're nuts because we're just, you know, walking around like a normal day and they're, they're, having, they're having some troubles with the cold. But um, it, it hasn't been that bad. There's been one really, really cold day here where we've had some issues outside, but aside from that, it's been pretty good. So what made you realize that Troy was your next coaching spot? I knew that, you know, it's very rare for assistants to stay in the same spot for a long period of time. And as I said, I was going into my 15th year if I'd stayed another year at, at Yale. So it was kind of time for me to, to start to look at something different to have my program. And I just happened to be looking through some of the track and field websites and saw that this position had been open. And for some reason, it just intrigued me. And I applied and, you know, got the call back and the rest is history. Now, as director of track and field, what responsibilities do you have in that role? A lot. I mean, it's, it's not only coaching. There's a lot of administrative duties that have to be taken care of, whether it's equipment or setting up facilities or making sure that staff is, is on task. I mean, that's basically being an administrator at that point with a little bit of coaching on the side. And I think that's been the biggest transition for me. Um, I had, you know, being at Yale, I was the men's head coach, but there was a director that was over me. So, you know, he basically took on most of those responsibilities. I had a lot of them as well, but not even close to what I have here at this point. Now, is it hard to balance the administration and the coaching for you right now? At first, I, I could say it was just because I wasn't used to it. I was just so used to, you know, get up, go to practice, and that was it. Or get up, go, get the few duties that I had at the university done, and then go to practice. But here, it, you know, you just have to be able to budget your time. It's just like I tell the kids. It's, if you can budget your time well, everything will fall into place. And, and that's what I've had to learn to do. A big um, calendar that I have to write everything down on because if I don't, I'm going to forget things. So, I mean, and that's, that's how I've adapted to it. Now, you're on the board of directors for the U.S. Track and Field and Cross Country Association. Mm -hmm. First off, how did you get on the board of directors? Um, basically, at our national convention a couple years ago, I was nominated and then voted in to that position. Um, and basically, what we do is we, we talk about rules. We talk about standardization of track and field and, and trying to make the sport better. Um, at that point, once we've discussed some of those things, we, we pass it on to the executive committee who kind of mulls over the decisions that we've made, and then they pass it on to the, the body of the USTF CCCA, which is our you know, national body. Now, is it hard as a coach or easier as a coach to be on this, knowing the rules that are coming? I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for me to know what's coming before it, it happens. Um, you always want to know what's coming down the pike before it gets there. Uh, sometimes there are things that do come up that we're not that we can't discuss with other people so that's that's something that was different for me over the past couple of years was was having that information knowing where it came from and having to hold on to it for a little while before it was actually released 
But um, I think it, it helps for sure because you know how to plan accordingly. Whereas, you know, before it's presented, people don't know that it's coming. So. And right now you're in the indoor track season. Um, mm -hmm. Just what is your focus so far this season or what are your goals for your team? Right now, the, the biggest goal was to get everybody to, to buy into the new program. It's, it's difficult when you've had a regime that was here for, I think the head coach was here before for eight or nine years. So, you know, you just have to let them know that what I have is going to work as well. Um, there are different ways to do everything. And, you know, they just had to buy into what my system was going to be. And, you know, for the most part, it's worked out pretty well. People have, people have bought in. People have been doing well on the track. We've had some, some very, very good performances. We have kids that are struggling now, but I think you're, we're starting to see some glimpses of, of very, very good performances coming down the pike. So. And what kind of changes have you made, you know, for your team? Um, I think the first semester, the, the structure that we had was a little different than what they had before. Um, I do a lot more in terms of interval training in the first semester. You know, I incorporated more speed in the first semester, and I think that was something that was, that was new to them. I, I know that a lot of kids have said they had never done that much speed in training before the, se the second semester. So I think that was the biggest thing that we, we did was we incorporated that kind of training into it. Okay, so you have the outdoor season coming up you mm -hmm. know um, is the indoor season like a preparation for the outdoor season or can you discuss the two you know a little differently it for the women the indoor season is uh, is a competitive season we're trying to to do well at the Sun Belt Conference championships indoors and outdoors so you know we're preparing as if we're, we're trying to win a championship indoors and out um, with the guys it's a little bit different we only take them to three meets indoors because it's not a sponsored sport here but then outdoors, it is a sponsored sport, and then there's a conference championship for them there. So, you know, it's a little bit different of, of a focus for the men inside, but we're still training hard. We're still trying to stay on the similar schedule in terms of how I set up the weeks, uh, you know, where the women are competing on Saturdays uh, or Fridays. The men, what they're doing is they're staying back and we're doing meat simulation or we're, we're doing some up-tempo things just to kind of keep them on the same schedule as what the women are doing. No, um, y'all competed at Chapel Hill, and you had lots of players break some personal records. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about those personal records that they were able to break? Mm -hmm. um, we can talk about the the 60. Um, we had Sydney Wright, who ran fast. Uh, she ran 774, and I think her her personal best before that was 80 something. So, you know, she ran 80 something last year in high school. She ran 780 something last year last week, and she ran 774 this past weekend. So I think that she's really coming into to form. She's doing very well. Uh, Camille Alexander, she ran 792, I think, this past week. Um, prior to that, I think she was in the 8.0s as well. And I think who is the Sierra King actually ran very well in the, in the 60 as well. She's getting better. Um, she's starting to come into form. Um, in the 400, Niata Alexander ran fast in the, in the 400 again. Um, she, Like I said last week, she was on the uh, national list. Uh, so hopefully she can continue doing what she what she's doing right now. Julia Ostendorf ran well this past weekend. She she had a personal best in the 3K, and Michaela Hodges as well. So we were having some very very good performances in a lot of different areas. Now, do y'all as a team, you know, set up and say, okay, we want to break these personal records, or is your team more for the team goal? How how do um, y'all set goals at the start of the season? Right now, what I'm trying to do is just establish a team, team atmosphere, team. You know, when we get there, it's one team, and that's what I'm trying to preach. And I don't focus on the the personal record. Track is different. You don't chase time. When you chase time, things go backwards in a hurry, and you start to run slower. You start to think about everything you're doing. And you know, one of the biggest cues I have with any of the athletes that I coach is when you get on the track, don't think, just run. And that's that's kind of how I, I approach everything. Um, and good times will come, personal records will come, school records will come, things will happen if you just let it happen. Okay, so now coach, we want to get to know you a little better. Okay. So I have some fun questions for you. Okay. First off, what's your favorite food? Indian food, and it's hard to find. <laughs> here. Especially down here. Yeah, yeah, I have to go all the way to Montgomery to find it, but I love Indian food. <laughs> okay, favorite music? Um, hip hop, R&B. Do you yeah. make your team listen to that? I do not. Okay. I do not. I kind of let them do what they want to do with that. Okay. Yeah. Your favorite movie? Coming to America. Why is that? Uh, just, it's just one of my favorite movies of all time. I laugh every time I see it. You always find something new with it when you, you can laugh at. And it's the only movie I know every lyric or every line to everything in that thing. Um, the last book you read? Oh, man. It was it's a good question. I haven't read a book in a while. So, I mean, it was, it's a trade. A lot of training manuals. That's basically it, just trying to stay up on the sport. Okay. Do you
keeping, yeah. keeping your coaching in mind. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you do in your spare time, or do you even have spare time? <laughs> For me, in my spare time, I ride motorcycles quite a bit. So that's what I do. I go out open road, and I just kind of calm down and relax and just ride for a little while, mm -hmm. come back and kind of chill. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty easy, easy going, mm -hmm. laid back type of guy. So, All right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining me today, Coach. Um, I problem. wish you the best of luck in both indoor and outdoor season. Thank you. Appreciate it. And stick around for more Trojan Sports Now. We'll have a preview of what's coming up in Troy Athletics.